Hello, how are you? I am fabulous as always and especially today I am so happy. The past couple of days have been amazing. Actually, the past couple of weeks have been amazing for me. And to top it up, yesterday and today, I spent so much time with my kids. We've had so much time. I mean, so much fun in the pool and just hanging out. And I just let my bald hair down <laughs> by not doing much work, but just having fun. I know, I know. I told myself, you know what, I'm going to deserve it. Just have fun. Put the laptop down and enjoy. Because I know when it comes to where can I do what I got to do as well? So I really gifted myself. And I, I, I'm sure that once in a while you do that for yourself as well. So today I want to speak about a subject I'm very, very passionate about. And I've entitled it, The Courage to Put Yourself Out There. If you've been my friend on social media for a while, then this is not new to you. But I need to keep hammering it. So once a, a week I come your way with a blog or a video usually with the same content. So for those who prefer video, you, you hear me speak or you see me speak. For those who prefer reading, you read about it. But if you prefer both, hey, double portion, I give it to you. So my name is Ama Duncan. I'm a corporate trainer, business coach, and founder of the Fabulous Woman Network. And as usual, or perhaps this is the first time you're watching me, if you see me look in that direction, I am just looking on my notes so I don't forget what I have written down to tell you. So, oh, and if you hear any noise, so my kids are actually in the same room as myself. They are both using earphones, right? That's the right name. And they are playing music and stuff. I can hear a bit of it. If you can hear it, just enjoy it. It's fine. It's the only way to make this video happen. So, the courage to put yourself out there. I'm going to start by just sharing a recent encounter with an Uber driver. So I, I take Uber from time to time because, well, it's functional, right? And so I was leaving a hotel. I had stayed there for some time and I was leaving to go to another place and I called him. And when he came, I, you, you know, the usual, I greeted. Um, he took my stuff into the, the booth, the car. Is it booth or booth? I think it's booth. And so I sat in the back as I always would. And then he drove out. And uh, I was really, confession, I was about to take my laptop to start working, which is what I usually do when I sit in Uber. Like, I just start working. But then this time, just as I was about to touch my laptop, he started making conversation. He said something like, oh, I didn't know there was a hotel here. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's quite a nice place. And um, it's, you know, he, I recommended it to him. And then he asked if I owned it. I was like, no, I don't own it. He was like, oh, I thought you owned it. I was like, hmm, that probably means that I'm going to be owning a hotel soon. Hey, why not? But then I, um, so that really started us conversing about, you know, different things. And we're talking about business. And he started talking about different things he did in business. And you know me, I'm a Duncan business coach mode just activated. And I started firing and firing as he also told me a few things that he had done. I mean, I was really impressed with him. And I also thought that he was really a great conversationalist, right? And so, um half no maybe not a third about after a third of the trip he hesitated a bit and then he asked me madam did you notice the bag i put at the booth of the car and i said um i may have but i'm not sure and then he hesitated a bit again and then he said well i sell ladies blouses i was like what and then he repeated i sell ladies blouses like at that minute, my admiration for him just went into the roof. Why? He had already told me a few of the things he had done in terms of business, you know, to take care of his family and, you know, to make ends meet even while still working full time. And so I was already impressed with him. But for him to have shared the fact that he sold ladies' blouses in a bag, that he keeps in his car and then shows to uh, you know the customers his you know uber customers i was so impressed 
And then I asked him, but why did you put it at the booth? Because how would I see it? You know, like, why didn't you even tell me about it? Then he told me the truth, which I could really identify with. He wasn't sure how I was going to take it. And I really got him. And you know what? The funny thing is, so eventually when we got into a certain traffic, he stopped and then he took the stuff and I started looking at the tops. Oh my God. Even before he took them, I was like, he took them out. I was like, okay, I hope there are pink tops in because I'm looking for pink tops for myself. And then, you know, but even if I don't find any, I have my daughter, my cousin, my mom, I'm going to them. So yeah, I'll take a few. Long story short, I think he must have had about 12 or how many tops. I took all but four, which didn't fit or something because I bought some for myself, for my mom, my cousin, my daughter. Now, it, the beauty of this whole thing was I happened to be his ideal customer because <laughs> I like to say, there's this funny thing that I say that I am terrified of Ghanaian boutiques because I feel like I cannot afford it. You know, this is a, an old mentality. Of course I can afford, but I just used to think that, oh my God, the prices were too much for me or whatever. Ignore what I'm saying, but I have this phobia. Uh -huh. Let's just put it this way. I have this phobia for Ghanaian um, boutiques. And so I am usually the type that would perhaps look at it online and order. Even that one, I don't do it that much. But then I used to have these guys who would just bring me the stuff and then I'll choose and pay instead of me going into the boutique. I know, I know, I know I have issues. <laughs> and so I happened to be his ideal customer because he was using the model I preferred. And also his prices were just perfect for me. And then the brand he was selling was a brand I was always already used to and I loved. And so I was his ideal customer. And I kept thinking, hmm, imagine if he hadn't had the courage to just show me the items. First of all, tell me about them and then show them to me. He would have missed out on the sale and I would have missed out on the things I really needed. Like I, I needed those stuff, yeah? And if you've been watching my video, you will likely be seeing some of these tops in pink and nice tops and all. I mean, I think the next day I even wore one of the tops anyway because I loved them that much. And well, so this also changed our conversations. So we're still talking about business, but then we focus the conversation on, you know, courage. And for those of us who are selling, how sometimes it's so difficult because, you know, you're feeling, oh my God, what if, what if? And so I asked myself, really not him, like, does anyone ever slap somebody because they attempted to sell not really the worst thing we can get is the no and yet that no the fear of hearing the no is so powerful that it stops us like and i have been in similar situations where i didn't master the courage to say oh hi this is what i sell or this is what i have and i missed out on a sale you see the thing is we can never tell if somebody is going to buy or not our responsibility is to show them what we've got, especially when the opportunity presents itself. And I'm smiling because I recently had a nice opportunity to just gift someone with a product. I wasn't even going to sell it. I was going to gift it to them. And I chickened out. And then, so, the, the, the whole thing, I, I, I look back and I'm wondering, why did I chicken out? Why didn't I give it to her? Of course, she was a a big person um, in government and I wanted to gift her my book, you know, my book, Nyan's of Inspiration, but I didn't because I chickened. And while perhaps that was not about making sale, that also, I missed out on an opportunity for her to know what I do or something, you know, and it's really sad <laughs> that sometimes we allow the fear of no to stop us or sometimes it's not even the fear of no i mean in my case when i analyze it it wasn't even that i was afraid i'm not afraid of approaching him but whatever made me hesitate i don't know and i feel like as business persons especially when we are obscure when people don't know us and we need to really let them know us the only way is to master the courage to put ourselves out there 
so that people will get to know us. I mean, our potential clients, the people who even need our products and services, they don't know us. And a lot of times they are going about really like these tops I'm talking about. They were things I really needed. I didn't buy them like, um, what's the word? Impulsely. No, I hardly do impulse buying. I needed these tops for myself and for my um, daughter. My mother and my cousin, I bought it for them because I, I, I was going to see them and I wanted to gift them something. So these were things I really needed. You see the point? And so people are out there who need our items, but sometimes we are so afraid to just tell them what we have. But my message for you is this, hey, just put yourself out there, okay? Just give it a shot. Just give it a shot. Um, recently, one of my um, clients for a, a a product I released about two months ago called Facebook Live for Beginners. So I did it quietly for only the women within my network. And one of the ladies that took part in this training, her name is Emanuela. Her business name is Pat Ella. I noticed that for the past few weeks, he's been doing the Facebook Lives consistently. And so in the group that we're in, I just asked, you know, I just commended her um, and then asked her to just keep doing the Facebook Lives because it will help her with brand awareness. So this is what I would usually say. Even if by putting yourself out there, you're not making the sale, you get brand awareness. So this is what I always encourage. But I, I just want to read to you a message that um, I got. So when I asked her, are you noticing an improvement in your Facebook engagement since you started doing Lives? And she responded, yes, please. And I said, great, your consistency will pay. Now listen to her response. Amen. I made sales after today's life. I made sales, which ultimately is one of the things we really want. Apart from the fact that we want to create the brand awareness. We want people to buy. Buy once, buy some more, tell their friends, tell others. So that we get that consistency in our revenue and profit and so that we sustain the business, right? And she was having it with the Facebook lives that she was doing. And yet, when I ask for those of you who are in my audience, you've been listening to me for a while. You know I talk about doing Facebook lives and generally live videos all the time. And you see me use the live videos all the time to reach out to you. A lot of you buy from me because you see me do the live. I've already talked over and over again about how valuable doing live videos is even as compared to doing pre-recorded pre-recorded like i'm doing now is also great but live videos are better i talk about it and people are like oh but ama you know i'm shy or oh, ama i don't know what to say or oh, ama um what if i make a mistake or oh, ama what if no one watches if this is you i've got news for you so i'm relaunching the facebook live for beginners Course. It's going to be an online course starting 14th November and it's going to be for two weeks. Excuse me. And it's going to be for two weeks. I want to, I'm sorry, for a month. I'm doing a video. It's going to be for a month. And I want to encourage you to take part if you are interested in learning how to use Facebook Live to reach your audience. This training is for you. Even if you've never done a Facebook Live before, but you need to be able to confidently come on live and do what you have to do. So I want to encourage you to sign up. Just look out for it. I'm going to share more details. Before I go, I want to encourage you, please, please, please. It is okay to put yourself out there because that is how you get the attention you need. So your wonderful product and services can be seen by the people you need them to see. You get me? You feel me? And so until I come your way again, God willing, next week, I just want to leave this with you. Please, 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 you have to do what you have to do for the sake of the sustainability of your business. Please do what you have to do. And just before I go, let me just remind you that I have created a PDF file called called Free Places You, you Can Advertise Your Business on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn on Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. If you're interested, just click on the link that I have provided somewhere around this video 
and then you have all the details that you need to you know there's the link it will send you to a place you give us your name and your email address so that we can send this PDF file into your email. If you don't find it in your inbox, just check your spam or promotions folder and it will be there. Plus, every week I will send you one of my blogs so you can just read it, get encouragement and get what you need to push your business, okay? So I wish you the very, very, very best. Don't forget to put yourself out there. Bye!